Seattle, I'm taking my feet up. I need me a drink for my sanity. I'm back to the land and I feel like a bandit. I'm still in a horse and I'm vanishing. I whipped up Miami, then I'm back to Brooklyn and feel like my life is a fantasy. Gotta keep the lights on, going right through it. Left wrist ice, my right going stupid. Drip so wet and it move like fluid. New AR, and I might go shoot it. Work so hard and I might go through it. Y'all need proof and I might just prove it. Don't do fake, man, we move so true. Y'all so blue, now you look like bruises. If Disney truly thinks we need almost 90 seconds of recapping at the beginning of every episode to help the new episode make sense, I really have to ask why they didn't just release this as a movie. Because then you would have been bitching about the movie being way too long instead of bitching about the previously on segments? Get the back to time right Ah, the back to tank. I should have guessed. Does all the heavy lifting so the writers don't have to deal with the consequences of physically f***ing up the protagonist. And the audience doesn't have to give a shit when they see someone injured. Well, Obi-Wan's injuries weren't fatal. He got burned pretty bad, but that won't necessarily kill you. Basically, what I'm saying is that the back to tank isn't just here as a means of saving lives because he could have survived without it. Also, this all seems a bit overdramatic. Doesn't this franchise usually just have people recuperating on an uncomfortable looking bed and sick bag? So you're sending a show for having something different happen than normal? Are you saying that not repeating the same tropes over and over again is a bad thing? Don't, don't. Expecting someone who has just woken up in a vat of liquid not to freak out. Pointing things out on the screen. Where's Leia? TV show completely skips Obi-Wan losing his shirt with Tala for leaving Leia behind and allowing her to be kidnapped by the bad guys. He should be fucking furious right now. So you want the show to waste time on a scene of Obi-Wan getting pissed at Tala instead of simply moving on with the plot? That's dumb. Can't keep me here. My father is Bail Organa. He's a senator. Writers think that the Leia we all know and love would be throwing around this do you know who my father is cliche. Are you forgetting a new hope? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a member of the Imperial Senate on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. She knows everything. Telling secrets to a child. Ever. They didn't tell her any secrets though. They simply smuggled her out of Imperial hands using a secret route. These are two completely different things. I mean, it's not like they just carelessly blabbed all their secrets to her. No idea what the Empire is capable of. Of course Roken knows what the Empire is capable of. What does Obi-Wan think he's doing here, digging for fossils? Just because Roken is fighting against Imperial control doesn't mean that he can't underestimate the power or evil reach of the Empire. Seeing as Obi-Wan doesn't know Roken, he simply thinks that he hasn't had as much experience with the Empire's cruelty as he himself had. Look, if you want my help, you got it. Obi-Wan being a dick works. Yes, because he inadvertently reminded Roken of the family he lost, thereby motivating him to help. Are you actually struggling to understand this? Impenetrable, Wade. It will, of course, prove to be extremely penetrable. Not really. Just because they end up penetrating it doesn't mean that it was easy. It requires a lot of skill, and if I'm being honest... Sheer dumb luck. Truth is, nobody knows what it looks like in there. So what is the point of this fancy hologram if it has zero information to share? The hologram is showing us the outside of the base, Nimrod. Do you think that the inside is the only part that matters? What are you, a walking sperm cell? We need to find a way inside. Oh, well, we're not soldiers. Those speeders are for hauling sewage. She's ten years old. Thinking that the age of the child you're rescuing will change the core function of your speeders or the ability of those riding them. I'm going to take a moment to be pedantic and say that he doesn't think the speeders or the skills of these people will change. He simply hopes that they'll put in more effort to find a way with the existing resources. Also, we need a Dirty Jobs episode on how they're hauling sewage in these things because right now I'm guessing the back seat and that's definitely a sin. Everything wrong with Kenobi Part 4, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, he doesn't understand how hauling sewage in a speeder works. I can get you inside and I can get you access. Is your cover still intact? We'll find out soon enough. I know they have limited options, but this is not a plan. This is like me pulling out a 10 year old condom and assuming it won't immediately explode. My best friend and I play a game of Kerspunk. I'm gonna cut him off there because he winds up explaining this bullshit and it's simply not funny or interesting. So here's a sin for that. But more importantly, what do you mean this isn't a plan? They're taking a risk with their limited resources. It's the best they can do at the moment. What do you suggest? Past is a hard thing to forget. You just need time, that's all. Yes, I hear the first 10 years post failing to prevent the murder of all your Jedi friends and younglings is all about denial, and it's the following 10 where the real healing starts. So you're sending a character for giving bad advice? But isn't that simply a part of their character? How is that a sin? Thinking that this show needed the largest and coolest version of that thing at the airport that lets the TSA agent get a good look at your package. And yes, whichever package you're thinking of, I'm talking about the other one. Discount Jeremy makes a dumb penis joke ex machina. Also, why is any of this a sin? 
oh no, the episode has a machine that looks vaguely like a real life machine. That must mean the showrunners made a mistake. Perhaps I should just inform the Grand Inquisitor of your insolence. Allowing your vigilance to be confused with insolence by an abundance of confidence. Pointing things out on the screen with an abundance of annoyance. All right, I'm inside the system. Here we go. Just to recap here, the impenetrable fortress consists of a wide open hangar and one incompetent guard that doesn't feel the need to challenge a suspicious visitor. It's about as impenetrable as a 10 year old condom filled with jello being thrown. You get the idea. Impenetrable, at least in this context, does not only mean that people can't get inside the base, it also refers to how any intruders will be caught sooner or later. With that in mind, the vast amount of stormtroopers, various other guards, and officers do actually make it nigh on impregnable. Although I'm pretty sure Braun could impregnate the bitch. Give me ten good men and some climbing spikes. I'll impregnate the bitch. Ben, I'm overriding an entry port. <laughs> Lisa wasn't a fing exhaust port this time. Nope, that's not a sin removal. That's me adding an extra sin for the original trilogy. Discount Jeremy sin something he likes cliche. What are they keeping down there? Nobody within earshot, including this fing guy who we know heard her does all about this. Tala is a high ranking officer than these other guys, meaning that it's well above their pay grade to question her. Just keep heading north. Giving directions like this indoors. Do you think that cardinal directions stop existing indoors? What the hell? Galaxy far, far away with laser swords, faster than light travel, planet killing space stations, but no concept of 360 degree cameras. These droids are capable of turning their heads and moving. What would they want with simple 360 degree cameras when they've got that? Besides, the real sin is that there aren't stationary cameras on the ceilings that are picking up Obi-Wan's movements. Either everyone stepped out for lunch while this was happening, or the generic evil officer here was a real dick to his employees, and they're all quite happy to go about their work to the tune of him getting his ass kicked. The implication is that nobody else heard him getting his ass kicked. The sound effects were meant only for the sake of the audience. Did you hear that? Over there. Let's go. Good to know that the stormtroopers have a pre-agreed hierarchy when it comes to suspicious noises, and that generic thuds in the distance rank above unexplained radio comms. Let's think about this for a second. They hear a radio comm noise and then a thud. From these two pieces of information, we can safely assume that they thought those two noises were caused by the same thing, and they think they're going to investigate both at the same time. I think I just found the secure sector. <laughs> because the f***ing door decals are red? The only thing dumber than Obi-Wan assuming this is the fact that he's right. First, that fake ass laugh. And second, why is that dumb? The Empire is marking a section of the building that is different from the rest with a different color. Seems pretty straightforward to me. And why is it weird that Obi-Wan assumes that? He sees a different color decal and assumes it means this area is a secure sector. He's not stupid. What are you doing to the me? The same thing I'd do to anyone who doesn't embrace the Empire. Not giving the person you're about to encase in amber the courtesy of a clear and honest answer. Wait. No. Not giving the viewer the courtesy of a clear and honest answer because I'm just assuming you're doing to her what we just saw Obi-Wan looking at, but for all we know this device could be for root canals or making cotton candy. Jesus Christ, you can't be serious. Even a fucking toddler can understand that this is a torture device. You should really take an IQ test so that I can laugh at the results. This is your last chance, Leia. Except we all know it isn't. The music, the dialogue, the acting, everything is supposed to make me feel some kind of suspense, but that's a tall order when I know Disney, thankfully, would never show a child being tortured and we already know Leia survives this okay but we don't know if she gets tortured or if she gives up the information now you can always argue that we know neither of those things will happen because this show isn't ballsy enough to have them happen and you'd be right but I'm just being nitpicky so fuck off Tala I need a distraction I was happened just do it now. And this request is so vague that it raises a serious question about how Tala managed to come up with the appropriate distraction. She could have just stood on the desk and began singing Jiggle Jiggle, and I'm sure everyone in the room would have been distracted, but it would have been the least bit helpful for Leia's situation. Oh my god, you really are stupid, aren't you? He says he needs a distraction, which she is able to understand means something that will distract the security detail in and around his current position. How don't you get this? It's very simple. <laughs> Yes! Finally, the kid is back! The return of the mother forcing Jedi! But the writers made us wait till episode 4. So. And why is that a sin of this episode? Wouldn't that be a sin for the first three episodes? You know, the ones where this thing you like did not happen instead of the one where it does happen? <laughs> There's no. <laughs> he is not. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's, he's hiding her under a fing overcoat? I agree with the sin, but still. That fake-ass laugh. I'll admit it, I laughed when Tala shot the little mouse droid, but considering the tone of the rest of this episode, I have no idea if this was a joke or if the little guy actually posed a threat. 
discount Jeremy in something he likes cliche. Obi-Wan episode ends with Reva staring at Obi-Wan on an escaping ship cliche. That's not a cliche, my guy. Sorry, somebody had to go Joan Crawford on that kid.